So this is something that you guys have heard about. But let's talk a little bit about what's really going on with something called the Doppler effect. Okay? And the Doppler effect is just this. Let's say I'm looking at a star. And I know that that star is spitting out light in all directions. And let's say that it is stationary relative to me. Okay, here I am on the Earth. I'm looking at the star with my eyeball. Some of that light comes all the way and gets to me. What do I, what do I observe? I observe some particular color that came out of this star. Okay, there's usually a whole spectrum of colors, of course, but I observe some particular colors that are coming out of this star. But let's say the following happens. Let's say the star starts moving towards us. Okay, the universe is a big, crazy, violent place. Stars are moving all over the place. Let's say we find one that it's moving towards us. Okay, it's still emitting light, and some of that light gets all the way to us. When we look at that light, we can measure the frequency. F is the frequency of that light. And let's say we did the measurement up here. We measured the frequency when it was at rest. And we call that F0. And let's measure this one and see how it compares. With that star moving towards us, is this frequency the same as we measured before? Or is it something totally different? Well, it turns out that the frequency is in fact bigger than it was before. And one way to think about this is when you're exciting these waves, and you're traveling along with the wave, you kind of compress the wavelength. A shorter wavelength means it has to have a higher frequency. Okay? And this is something that you've heard of. It's called the blue shift. You've probably heard of the opposite, which is when the star is moving away from us. Okay, so now we're going to take that star and it's going to move away from us. In this one it was moving towards us with a speed v, and now it's going to move away from us with a speed v. And when that light gets to us, it in fact is shifted the other way. In this case, so that was moving towards us, this is moving away, we have f is in fact less than f naught. And that's called a redshift. Okay? And this is probably something that you've heard about in astronomy classes, right? They talk about the redshift of different stars out there. And what it means is the light that we observe has a different frequency than it should, than it would if it was at rest. Okay? Now, how does all this stuff tie together? How do we actually calculate the Doppler shift for different moving objects? So the equation that we need is the following. F is equal to F naught times 1 plus or minus V over C. Okay. So this is the frequency that you measure the observed frequency. This is the source frequency. That wave that it's emitting, if it was all at rest, what would it be? V is, of course, the relative velocity. C is speed of light.
and this thing, the plus or minus, just means moving towards or away from the observer. Okay? Frequency can either go up if it's coming towards you, or it can go down if it's moving away from you. Now, this is true when the relative velocity, v, is much less than the speed of light. It gets a little more complicated once you get up to close to the speed of light. But for most objects that we're familiar with, the thing is not going to be moving anywhere near the speed of light. So, let's take a look at an example of this, and let's look at a rotating uh, galaxy. Okay, so a rotating galaxy looks sort of like this. It's got these spiral arms on it, and the whole thing is spinning, and as it spins, it emits light that we can observe down here on the Earth, not to scale. Okay, and the thing is spinning in this direction. So there is some point here which has some speed V. There's some point on the other side which has some speed V. And so the whole thing is spinning around like that. All right, let's see if we can calculate some stuff about this galaxy using the Doppler shift. Okay, so we're going to say that uh, not only is the whole thing spinning, but the whole thing is moving away from us, and we'll call that speed v of the center. Okay, it's moving away from us and it's rotating, so we have this complicated system. And let's write down some givens. So the speed that it's moving away from us is 1.6 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. The speed here, v, is 0 0.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. But this is relative to the center of that galaxy. Okay. The um, source of the light has a frequency f naught of 6.2 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And now we want to find the following. We want to figure out what is the observed frequency from A. And what is the observed frequency from B? Okay, you've got a star on this side that is emitting some light, and we're going to collect it. You've got a star on this side that is emitting some light, and we're going to collect it. And we want to figure out what those frequencies are. Okay, so we go back to the Doppler shift. So the Doppler shift we said was F equals FO times 1 plus or minus v over c, but remember that is relative to us. Okay, so we're going to label that v relative. And the whole galaxy is moving away from us. Okay, and it's moving away from us faster than it's spinning. And so both of these are going to be redshift. Both signals are in fact redshifted which means lower frequency. And so we want to use the minus sign in our equation. Okay, so what is FA going to be? It is the natural frequency, FO, and then we have 1 minus V relative. Okay, but remember the A side was coming towards us as the galaxy was moving away from us, and so we in fact need to put up here 
v center minus v all over c. Okay, and now we have all those numbers. And so we can punch them in and try it out. And let's do that. We've got uh, 6.2 times 10 to the 14. Out in front, we have a 1 minus this thing, which is 1.6 times 10 to the 6 minus the rotational speed, which is 0 0.4 times 10 to the 6. And then that last bit is all over C, which we know is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, we'll just keep SI units on everything. We don't have to write the units. Close the parentheses. And if you do that, you should get, you can double check my numbers. I got 6.1752 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And that was the frequency of A. Now, if you do the other side, frequency B, what do you get? Frequency B is going to look very similar, except we're going to change one of these signs. So it's 1 minus V center plus V all over C. And now it's the same numbers. You're going to plug in. You just put a positive sign right there. And if you do that, you should get 6.1587 times 10 to the 14 hertz.